preparing for today's talk about cryptic crosswords in front of 4,000 people at the Royal Albert Hall, I began to get a bit stressed. So I thought, I need to turn that around. So I did. I bought a couple of chocolate cakes and I felt a whole lot better. <laughs> but then I thought, 4,000 people, gosh, that's a lot. What if I imagined I was talking to just four? But then that's just what the Royal Albert Hall is. It's four people. It's Roy, Al, Al, and Bertha. <laughs> and Sue L with the rest. <laughs> cryptic crossword lovers are used to sing words this way. But what is a cryptic crossword? Well, it's like a normal crossword with the definition and the clue. But there's an extra part to the clue, a cryptic part. So a clue for stress might be very anxious to bring back cakes. Very anxious is the definition. And then you bring back cakes. That's the cryptic part. So what would it be like if we could all see this hidden magic within our language? And what benefit might that bring? I believe the learning and playing word games could be the key to unlocking our full potential. This is Paul, my brother and my best friend. We spent our childhood together talking about football and music, the usual boy stuff. Paul was a singer in a band. He was brilliant at tennis and he aspired to being a writer. In fact, he was halfway through writing his first novel by the day of the car accident. He was 27. Of course, it's a tragedy when any young person loses their life, but what is equally tragic is that for those young people, their potential dies with them. All the things they wanted to do, all their ambitions gone. So in honour of those who never had the chance to achieve their full, that full potential, we must work hard to make sure we achieve ours. So my dream was to become a cryptic crossword writer. I've always loved wordplay ever since childhood. I can remember spotting that the word panther was made up of the word pant and the word her. It was like knickers on a lady. <laughs> I was 10, I was a boy, what do you expect? <laughs> but that love of wordplay never left me. And in my early 20s, soon after the death of my brother, I discovered the world of cryptic crosswords, where you're being asked not to take things literally, but to see what else words might mean. Where G-E-S-G wasn't just some random letters, but scrambled eggs. <laughs> and the people who wrote these clues had such fantastical false names as Aracaria and Gordius and Enigmatist. This was the world for me. I wanted to be one of those mysterious people. So I decided to shut myself in a room for two years. I was drawing little boxes on the walls of my student digs. I didn't answer the phone, I didn't answer the door until I've learned the trade I enjoy today. My name is John Halpern, and I write cryptic crosswords under various names for The Times, The Telegraph, The Independent, The Financial Times, and for The Guardian, under the name Paul. Over the years, I've introduced cryptic crosswords to lots of people. Many of them had previously said, I don't think I'm intelligent enough, or I don't have the right sort of brain for this. But the moment someone solves a cryptic clue for the first time, I see in their eyes something magical. What is it that at that moment has them lit up? Carefree joy written across their face. Perhaps, right there, deep down, they realize they can do it. They can achieve more than they thought was possible. And while around a million people in Britain alone right now solve cryptic crosswords, that left around 50 million adults and also children who didn't, I felt those millions were missing out on the chance to have some fun and to get to see how great they were and how clever they were in the process. After all, 
we all instinctively love wordplay. If your name is Hannah, perhaps you've noticed it's a palindrome, reading the same backwards as forwards. Similarly, if your name is Anna, and Bob, and Pip, and your mum, and your dad, and your nan. So then I thought, it's about time everyone got to share in this fun. 2013 marks the centenary of the first ever published crossword. It seemed the perfect opportunity to create something great. And as the puzzle is a British invention, invented by Arthur Wynne, a Liverpudlian, and it seemed like Britain was the perfect place to start. So in the spring, puzzle lovers, young and old, from all over the country came together to put on events where we could create crosswords as a community. At every event, everyone was invited to think of all the words they really, really love and that mean something to them. Then we put them all together to make a crossword, and then we wrote clues for them. Newspapers around the country were universally keen to run the story of how crosswords are bringing people together. And while these events were great fun and will be continuing, there was a bonus. Something else was happening that I hadn't expected. People began talking about the things that matter to them, their cities, their culture, the things they love. It seems that when we look at the very words that are important to us, we get to the very core of who we are. And when that happens, we get to understand one another, and we get to be understood. I saw friends being made, barriers being broken down. And this was all happening through the very thing that unites us all, our common language. And aside from bringing communities together, there's another opportunity here. It's in education. Perhaps you remember a time like this from your childhood. You've, you're in class at school, teacher asks a question, you put up your hand because you think you know the answer, but you're wrong. And you think, well, I feel a bit stupid now. Perhaps I should keep my hand down in the future. But rather than have us raise our hand just the once, puzzles and games have that unique ability to encourage experimentation, where we naturally want to have a go again and again to keep failing until we reach the next level and succeed. So let's use puzzles and games to say that it's OK to fail and that failure is simply part of the journey. And we're beginning that journey now to bring crosswords to schools and communities everywhere so that in honor of those who never had the chance to achieve their full potential, we can reach ours. Thank you.